Clive, I just want to ask you because I remember um, when we were in Nashville and we're sitting down and talking and that divine moment of, I feel like the glory just started crashing in, even in the, mm. the one of the most unlikely, <laughs> like, I don't say like a places mm. where we were seated in that moment mm. of some of the stories. Is there like a, mm. a, a story to share, just even being in Bali where you have literally seen the glory of God invade <laughs> the nation that isn't it? Because it's known we, as the island of the gods. Yeah. Could you share a story? We, we don't we we don't have enough time or and you don't have enough series for <laughs> to share all of god's stories but but the I, the island of bali for example has um 18000 guests and this is where a lot of people dream to have their anniversary their honeymoon i get to live here but it's actually called the island of the gods for good reason um you know it's a hindu island temples are everywhere i mean you cannot walk out in the street there without a house temple or a little temple big temples because they're constantly praying and they're praying to the spirits, the ancestors. They don't realize it, but they're praying to the demons. Um, the demons have bewitched them. But uh, so it's a very spiritually active island, very spiritually active island. A lot of guests come here and, uh, you know, they just they just see the temples and they take pictures of it. But they don't realize in the invisible realm. And I think as Christians, we need to realize as people of, of the spirit uh, who walk with the spirit we're we're walking in the kingdom which is an invisible kingdom and and the lord asked us to be visible uh, um, we we manifest the kingdom in our own lives it's what a tremendous responsibility our lives uh, we carry for him but on, on this island of bali i mean we do we do war i mean i can i can tell you stories of encounter after encounter of the demonic uh often often it is a timed when something of god's spirit is moving and i remember specifically they come at often at night time they seem to be busy around two to three a.m in the morning and uh you can feel them that you know you'll hear them i've smelt them some of them smell bad really bad um, but you can feel them. It feels like there's a presence, a dark presence. Sometimes they try and take your breath away and they want to stop you calling the name of Jesus. But as with the Jesus reaching the demoniac, uh, the disciples were buzzed. They didn't know who he was. They've just climbed out of a boat, right? And um, they just climbed out of the boat and they said, who is this that the wind and the waves answer to? And they stepped down and a man with 2,000 demons in him falls to his knees and he said, the demons say, why are you here? We know who you are. So the demonic know who Jesus is and they knew they know who the Jesus followers are. And so here's one story. <laughs> I'm going to give you the adult version of it. And, and it's, it's, just, it's just to give God glory of the authority and the power he's given his people. And, and I think that's really, really important. Um, yeah, I'll come back to that. Uh, we were invited. Uh, we had some kids that we were doing English teaching with just as a bridge into the community. And uh, the little girls invited us to a Balinese dance where they have this, they get dressed up. And we said, we'll come support your thing. So, But what we didn't realize is it was actually a sacred ceremony that we would be invited to. We had to get dressed up with a sarong and Catherine had to put long sleeves on and... and uh, so we turned up there. We were the only two Westerners and about 300 people on the intersection. The street had been swept. There were lights up on the uh, up, up hanging in the trees, and they had a band, the gamelang band, playing the cymbals. And uh, then the dancers came, and it was entertaining. But there was a heavy darkness about the whole event, and it went on for hours and hours. And there was nowhere to sit. We were just leaning up against a wall. And there were three soloists, three young gals, uh, teenage, um, you know, young 20-year-olds, probably working a bank during the daytime. But here they are all dressed up doing their traditional dance. But they are calling down. We didn't realize this, but they're calling down the demons and being in, in possessed by. And um, so they would do a dance, and the priests would come up behind them to catch them falling. And then they would scream and wail and howl, and they just would be completely possessed by a dark spirit they would drag them to in front of the priest in front of the temple and then they would go through a cleansing ceremony and eventually the stronger power would release this other power and it just showed everybody how powerful 
these things were, and they are very powerful. The demons are dark, they're dangerous, and they're nasty. But as a Christian, we don't, as a Christ follower, we don't need to worry about that. Well, the second gal got up to do this. Catherine says, we've got to leave. Our home church is going to fire us so they find us here. And I says, no, sweetheart, the Lord wants us here for a reason. We're here for a reason. He wants us to see something. I think if we knew what we were going to get into, uh, Cindy, we, we, wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't have been there. But we were invited with our eyes closed. And the second gal gets up there, and she's possessed now. And she gets drugged in front of the temple. And I, I've never read this. I haven't been trained in this. But the Spirit just said, speak a prayer. And it was just a gentle prayer into the invisible realm. And I said, in the name of Jesus, let that woman go. And she fell like a rock and screamed and collapsed. But this is what I want to tell you. That that was in her leapt across the 60 feet or whatever it was and in the invisible realm, boom, all I could do was feel that demon in front of me. Uh, it, was, it was like a truck had hit me. I could feel it. And I said to Catherine, I just prayed the demon out. And I think as surprised as we were that the demons turned up, the demons were even more surprised. There were two Jesus followers there. And they, I just can only imagine they came rushing to me like, what did you say? Who are you? That's what they said with the demoniac in, in, John's, in John 6. So I just prayed it to leave. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, you all go, all of you. The third lady got up and she is the showstopper. She's been at this for many, many years. She's the main show and she does her dance. The music stops, the priests come up and there's no manifestation. The demons have fled. <laughs> and then... And then it rained. In the middle of dry season, there's one cloud sitting right over the top of this thing. And, and I just think the Lord just said, my kingdom come. I will not be, I will not be shamed. 